Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the feature race at Aqueduct on Saturday, race number three. It's the $100,000 Franklin Square Stakes. Our preview is presented by DRF Bets. Please sign up to DRF Bets. You get a $200 free bet when you do. No deposit required. DRF.com forward slash join is where you need to go. Please use the promo code FREEBET. Zero, 09. Now let's take a look at this field of New York bred three year old fillies getting ready to go six furlongs at the Big A on Saturday. A field of six, Matt. And we look at this race and we see the four beautiful buzz, the two paws for the cause. These horses hooked up in their most recent start at Aqueduct on January the 19th. And beautiful buzz got the better of that duel, but she still lost the war. Yeah, I've got to be honest. I, I kind of look at that race. I went back and watched it again and I, I just. If you watch it just at face value, isn't Beautiful Buzz just a better horse than Pause for the Cause? I, I'm not trying to, you know, downplay Kieran's horse at all, but I just kind of felt like of the two trips, Beautiful Buzz, she was the one that won the battle, and you're right, she lost the war that day, but I kind of look at this race and say, why all of a sudden should I expect pause for the cause to turn the tables. I agree. Pause for the cause perhaps this time around is inside and is going to show some speed, but Velvet Trini to her inside is faster probably than both pause for the cause and beautiful buzz. I hope folks don't take the short comments at face value from that last race where pause for the cause's comment of stumbled start bumped at the eighth. She did bobble coming out of the gate, but soon righted herself to press beautiful buzz for most of the race. Beautiful buzz came out a bit in upper stretch, caused pause for the cause to take up slightly, but I don't think pause for the cause was ever getting by, uh, getting by. I think the plan for pause for the cause is this time form U.S. pace projector where Velvet Trini goes to the front, Beautiful Buzz sits second, and pause for the cause all of a sudden works out a perfect trip. But for me, that might be her best chance. Well, the, the interesting thing there for me anyway, looking at a horse like pause for the cause, we talk about Beautiful Buzz, I have a hard time seeing the sort of script turned here. Pause for the cause, the only victory thus far is in gate-to-wire fashion. And again, I know I harp on this probably too much, but until you prove to me that you can pass a horse, I don't want to find out for the first time. And I think that's the beautiful thing about Beautiful Buzz, where if for some reason, I'm not saying that she's going to be slow from the gate, but if she's a half a beat slow and the one and the two go, she's already shown that she can sit a little bit from off the pace. I love that sort of tactical versatility, and that's why I would take her every day of the week. The horse to catch is down towards the inside. That's the number one, Velvet Trini, one of two in here trained by Biznath Parbu. Velvet Trini does have big speed. She's either been first or second after the first call in her last eight races. She was life and death to win, however, in a $40,000 New York bred race on January the 27th. But she provides a hot pace for Trini Ninja, who might be the preferred half of this non-coupled entry. Yeah, look, this horse down on the inside, you can't deny speed. Speed's always dangerous. You get Paco that's about as good as you could ask for with a speed horse. You want to talk about a dreadful field? The runner-up came back and earned a 37 next out. The third-place finisher, a minus zero. The fourth-place finisher, a minus zero. Uh, to me, all she is is basically a target for the other uncoupled entry. Trini Ninja might be a bit of a surprise package, however. I know she's a maiden. She was 115 to 1 for her career debut. She didn't break well. She rushed up in between horses. She was steadied inside. It looked like she was all done. Despite failing to change leads, she rallied and passed some horses to finish a good second. And then last time out in the East View Stakes, she just faced better horses. That English soul is okay. Midnight Disguise came back to win the Open View Sonda with a 76 buyer. Trini Ninja gets some pace here. Whether she's good enough to beat some of these, I'm not sure, but she sure fits better with this field than she did last time, I think. Absolutely. Uh, this is a certain class relief. I mean, you look at it. You brought up English Slow. You brought up Midnight Disguise. She's facing, let's say, lesser company at this point in their career anyway. I guess I'm a little bit concerned about that turn back from a mile to six. Just how far back is she going to be? But having said that, we talked about the uncoupled stable mate where you know that you're going to have an honest pace early on for her to run at. The only multiple winners on the field are on the outside. The five, Aunt Babe, the six, My Roxy Girl. Aunt Babe pulled off a 39 to one shocker in the New York Stallion Series on December the 16th, a race in which the pace completely fell apart. They're hoping for a similar situation here. I, I would challenge anyone. I understand the pace fell apart. T tell me where that race came from because that's the only thing that she's shown thus far in her career. Otherwise, I don't think she has any chance in this race. The six My Roxy girl has won three out of her last four races against weaker competition. She draws a comfortable outside post position and could work out sort of a mid-pack trip, sitting off the potential fast pace and likely getting the jump on horses like Aunt Babe and Trini Ninja, who figure to come from the back of the pack. That being said, I just wasn't wowed by that last race where she cruised up on the outside, didn't change leads, and was all out to win. I think these are tougher horses. 
Yeah, you brought up the no lead change. That's certainly a concern. I also kind of look at it and say that run two starts back where she ran in behind Beautiful Buzz, she was never within shouting distance of this horse. So it's kind of hard for me to look at that and expect you're going to get some big forward move. But having said that, the most recent start and the one three starts back, strictly from a numbers standpoint, she fits. Let's take a look at our top selections for the $100,000 Franklin Square Stakes. We both like Beautiful Buzz. We're hoping Angel Arroyo avoids a duel with Velvet Trini. I'd be very comfortable sitting second, three quarters, a length off of that horse, attack on the turn, hopefully take over and hold off the closers. Yeah, I agree. You know what? They can either press the pace throughout if only the one horse goes. If the one and the two are both intent on going, she's shown in that career debut that she can set it two or three lengths off of it and still come with a run. I think she's the horse to beat in here. We'll both go with the four. Beautiful buzz in the $100,000 Franklin Square Stakes at Aqueduct on Saturday. Again, if you're playing the big A card from home, do so with DRF bets, please. $200 free bet, no deposit required. DRF.com forward slash join is where you need to go. The promo code is FREEBET09. An approximate post time for the Franklin Square is 1.50 Eastern. Good luck.